This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at NCloth. NCloth is Maya's system for simulating the motion of clothing and fabrics. However, that's not all NCloth is capable of doing. You can also simulate different materials such as rubber, deforming metals, or even concrete, all under the same system. We're going to explore how NCloth works by looking at a flag blowing in the wind. I'll create a cylinder, and this cylinder will just act as our pole for supporting our flag. And I'll just move that center pivot down to the bottom of the cylinder and move the cylinder up just so that it's on the grid plane. And we'll scale that so that it looks more like a tall pole. And just zoom out so we can take a look. With that set, I'll freeze the transforms and delete the history. And that just gives us our pole, and we'll just switch to a shaded view. Now, for the actual flag, I'll create a polygon primitive plane. All NCloth objects must be polygon objects. You cannot simulate NURBS or subdivision surfaces. Everything must be polygons. So with my plane, I'm just going to rotate this up and we'll scale this so that it looks a bit closer to a flag. And let's move that pivot point to the top corner there. And I'm doing this just so that we can snap this and we'll turn our wireframe on just so that we can snap this to the top of the pole. This really doesn't have any functional application towards the end cloth simulation itself. This is all just to help us place our objects and of course to create our geometry that we're going to simulate. Now if you look at the geometry itself, we have our faces here and they're not square. End cloth wants regular geometry. The more even, and uniformly aligned we can make our geometry, the better our simulation will function. So even with this, it's not horrible geometry, and this would simulate just fine, we can improve on it. I'll go to my channel box and go to the inputs for the polygon plane. And I'll change my subdivision width and height to match my scale. And we'll just change that to five. And now that gives me nice, uniform, very regular geometry. These are all nice squares. But I'm going to increase it so we have more geometry for the simulation to simulate. And by upping it, this does two things. First, it will increase our simulation time. And basically that just means it's going to be harder for the NCloth solver to figure out how to make this object move. So the more geometry we have, the more complex the simulation becomes, the longer it'll take or the more difficult it will be to simulate it. We're still pretty low on our geometry here, so everything is still fine. But as you were to increase it, it would become far more difficult and more complex. The trade-off here is that by adding more geometry, we will also get a lot more detail in our simulation. We'll see more wrinkles and folds in the fabric. So it's a delicate balance between adding geometry for detail and keeping the geometry low so that it will simulate nice and fast and clean. Okay, we're all set. Let's delete the history of the flag. Always important regardless of what we're doing. We always want to get rid of that history prior to doing our animation. And then we will also freeze those transforms. And for good practice, we'll also just rename our objects. That always makes it easier to find what it is we're looking for. We're all set. Let's select our flag 
and we'll make this into an N cloth object. So I'm already in the N dynamics menu set, and this is where all of my N cloth parameters are. Then we'll choose N mesh, and with my object selected, in this case a flag, we'll choose create N cloth. Now we do have some options here, but if we open up the options box, you'll see that there's really not too much going on in here. The defaults are going to work just fine for us. The only one to point out is this solver area here, and it says create new solver. That is our only option. Now this is our only option because there are no other solvers in the scene. If we did have them, the other solvers would show up in a list, and we could choose those to assign it to. So we'll just create a new solver and choose create cloth. Now my flag geometry is an active end cloth object. And when I say active, this means that it is under the control of the simulation engine. And for future reference here, that simulation engine is called the nucleus. So right now, the nucleus will control my end cloth object. And let's expand our timeline out. And we'll just raise that way up. And when I hit play, we'll see the simulation in action. And my flag will just fall into infinite space. In order for it to stay where it is, we need to secure it to the pole. We can do this by adding a constraint. And just like how we used constraints with characters and with animation, we can also use constraints with our simulation. We cannot use normal constraints, however. We have to use N constraints, and these are located in the N Dynamics menu set. And the type of constraint that we're going to add to this will be a point-to-surface constraint. Prior to adding this, I'm going to take my pole and convert this into a rigid body. Now this is an N rigid body, and this means that it will make the pole a colliding object for the flag, but the pole itself will not be an active N cloth object, it'll be a passive rigid object. And when we say passive, it means that it will react in the simulation, but it will not be under the control of the nucleus solver. What that means is that we'll still be able to translate, rotate, and scale it in any way that we want to. Whereas our end cloth flag, it's completely under the control of the nucleus solver. It's an active end cloth object. We're not allowed to translate or rotate it. The solver needs to do all of that work. So let's take our pole and we'll choose end mesh, create, passive, collider. Now that's all set up. Now as a passive collider, we can then take vertices of my flag and connect them to that passive collider or rigid body. So I will select a line of verts there. And we won't use all of these. We're just going to leave the two ends that way, this geometry in here will pull away from the pole, but these two top points and bottom points will stay fixed to the pole. So with those vertices selected, I'll hold Shift and select the pole, go to End Constraint, and choose Point to Surface. The constraint gets created, and you can actually see it. Those dots are the constraint icon. Now let's zoom out, and we'll hit play again, and we can now see the flag is attached, and it's also colliding against the pole, and it's colliding because it is an N rigid passive object. And so whenever we play the simulation, the flag will react, and if we go back to our first frame, it will return to its original position. We can hit play to see it react. Let's take a break with N cloth right now, and we'll come back and look at some more of 
its attributes to control our simulation a little bit better.